The Razer Kyo Pro Ultra is the fourth addition to the Kyo lineup. First there was the Kyo, then the Kyo X, then Kyo Pro, and now the Kyo Pro Ultra. So I'll start off by comparing these two at their highest resolutions. The Kyo Pro gets up to 1080p 60 uncompressed. The Kyo Pro Ultra can also do that, but it can go up to 4K 24 frames per second uncompressed, but also 4K 30. And 4K 30 is gonna be compressed to MJPEG. 4K 24 is pretty choppy, so I don't think it's that useful, but some people like that. And motion is gonna get kind of choppy. I know some people like 24 frames per second. It's really not for me, but if you need this, then it's there. Right out the gate, when we're talking about sharpness, this is a massive improvement for the Kyo Pro Ultra. Kyo Pro just looked really soft. Even when it first came out, the original Kyo was sharper than it. Color accuracy is a lot better. We have this kind of over contrasty, but also fake saturation effect that's going on in the Kyo Pro. Now it still did look way better than the other colors of the webcams that were out at the time that the Kyo Pro launched. So I knew that Razer, they were working on something when it came to color reproduction, but they really fine tuned it with the Kyo Pro Ultra. Cause there's some really weird kind of bluish stuff going on with my jacket. This is just kind of gray. If you look on the Kyo Pro Ultra, it's got it right. This one's mm, not really. And then the browns on my face are like, they're a lot better than what other webcams were getting before on the Kyo Pro. But the Kyo Pro Ultra, it looks a lot better. And actually, let me demonstrate. When the Kyo Pro Ultra is dropped down to 1080p, 60 frames per second, you can use it uncompressed. This is YUI2 right now. The colors look even better than they were before. It looks very close to my mirrorless camera, the Sony ZV-1. Dynamic range is something else that's been improved. Now, I do have some very good studio lights on right now, but it's really hard to keep the dark colors to be shown accurately like my hair, while also avoiding the blowout of the highlights like on my eyebrows in the Kyo Pro and I'm able to get that really nicely done in the Kyo Pro Ultra. And I'll also show some backlit shots demonstrating the high dynamic range mode because both of these webcams can do that in Razer Synapse. I wouldn't do that myself, but yeah, you can if you want. And this is the shot if you had HDR off. So if you are backlit, again, very easy fix without any software. Okay, so now I'm completely backlit with the Kyo Pro. So let's go ahead and turn the HDR off. Now this is the Kyo Pro Ultra and HDR is off. This is right in OBS. Now we do have an improvement here, but things are looking kind of warped back there. Now this is actually at 4K 30 frames per second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to change the exposure manually. So yeah, it looks pretty interesting. It's Hey, if you're into this type of effect, like by all means. Now, one of the major differences between these webcams is the depth of field, the shallow depth of field that you're able to get on the Kyo Pro Ultra. So with this device, you can see that everything in the background is about as sharp as what's in the foreground. Well, nothing's really that sharp on the Kyo Pro, but you're still able to read the text that's like on these boxes over here. Now the Kyo Pro Ultra, besides the excellent dynamic range that this device has, shallow depth of field for the first time on any webcam that's ever come out. Text is blurred out very nicely, even over in this direction with those boxes to the side. Now this is some low light performance with the Kyo Pro and Kyo Pro Ultra. I'll go ahead and drop the gain down to zero on both webcams so that you can actually see. This is what the gains or the ISO drop down to their minimum. So yeah, it's actually super dark. So this is an impressive job, but especially for the Kyo Pro Ultra. The Kyo Pro gets really gritty and grainy with that little amount of light, but the Kyo Pro Ultra is able to keep the grain down to not quite a minimum, but like really low in comparison. All right, now I have HDR on with the Razer Kyo Pro. And while I'm here, let me go ahead and show this autofocus on this device. And this is one of the newer batches of it. So the autofocus, uh, well, it says that there's a firmware update available. I'm not even gonna try that, but it is pretty decent right now. So, you know, I don't even think I'm gonna need it. So autofocus is on right now and it's prioritizing my face. So if I try to put something up to the screen or up to the camera, it's just really not gonna do it. It knows where my face was and it's really gonna try to just keep that in focus at all costs. Uh, but let's go ahead and put this on standard. So that way, whatever is moving or closer to the screen, it is more likely to pick up, but it's still, it seems like it's built in that it really does like your face above anything else. This is like an early release version of Synapse, even though the product is out. So yeah, that's how that works out. The autofocus definitely, if you want it to like showcase a lot of products, Right now, I don't think that this is really the way to go, but for your face, it definitely keeps that in focus. All right, and the last thing I'll demonstrate here that Razer Synapse can control is the lens distortion. And lens distortion is as you get towards the edges of the screen, you'll see this line is kind of like bent and kind of like going in like a fisheye. And the option is gonna be down here, 
Minus distortion compensation. So now that line is straightened in. It kind of cropped in, zoomed in a little bit, and like adjusted for the edges. I'm actually not sure the technical method of doing lens distortion compensation, but it did a great job, so I'll take it. Both of these webcams have built-in microphones. I'm starting off speaking into the Razer Key L Pro. It's kind of tinny, but you know, it is webcam. It is pretty far away from me. And now I switched mics over to the Razer Key L Pro Ultra. Again, similar comments as to the original Key L Pro. And these are really just for emergencies or backup. So my verdict is the Razer Key L Pro Ultra is basically better than the Key L Pro in every way imaginable. It is a whole lot more expensive. I bought mine for $300. The Key L Pro I actually bought for, I think it launched for like $200 and I bought it for its launch price, but lately I've seen it down to like 94 bucks. So if you can get it for that cheap, then that's still actually a really good price. But if you can afford it, then I definitely would get the Razer Kiel Pro Ultra, and it is currently the best webcam on the market. Nothing else is anywhere close to it.